Welcome to Willow's World of DIY. I'm Willow and today I'm going to show you guys how to install a mini split system. These are some of the specialty tools that you're going to need. It's a pipe cutter, a pipe reamer, a pipe flare, a vacuum pump, a gauge set, and a mini split adapter. Let's get to it. I start off by digging out an area uh, for the concrete slab. I dig down about two to three inches. Once I have it all dug out, I set my form in and get it level. And then I fill in around the forms with dirt and I pack it down. Then I install a wire mesh and I'm just cutting it to size. Now I'm mixing up the concrete. I just use a wheelbarrow and a flat blade shovel. Once the concrete's mixed, you can pour it into the form. I pull the wire mesh up a little bit because I want it to be in the center of the concrete slab. I'm raising the form up because I wanted uh, the concrete a little bit thicker and I had the extra bags of concrete. Now I'm installing an outdoor electrical disconnect panel and I'm using concrete anchors to mount it to the stucco. Now I'm installing the conduit. I just measure and cut it to size. And I already ran the wire through the attic. This is 10-3 uh, with ground, uh, Romex wire. Now I'm measuring the difference between the mounting bracket and the unit so I know how much clearance we'll need. It says in the installation manual that the unit needs to be mounted six inches from the ceiling. And since hot air rises, this will allow the unit to work more efficiently. Now I'm drilling a hole through the wall for the refrigeration lines. This hole has to be roughly two inches. I mark the location on the outside stucco. And since I don't have a two inch uh, masonry hole saw, I just use a quarter inch masonry drill bit and drill a bunch of holes and then knock it out to make my hole. Now we can install the inside unit. I had to widen out my hole just a little bit to fit the, the uh, lines with the insulation around them through the hole. Now I'm drilling into the slab for our concrete anchors. The 
and I hook up the drain line and the refrigeration lines. This is a step that I don't see in a lot of other uh, installation videos on YouTube. Um, you want to make sure you cut your line to size, cut off all the excess, and you want to remount the copper to get rid of any burrs and then you've got to flare this tube and even I make mistakes as you can see I flared this tube without having the brass nut on it so I had to cut it back off and put the brass nut on and then reflare it so make sure you put the brass nut on before you flare the copper Once you have the copper tubing flared, you can install the refrigeration lines to the condenser. And then I tighten the lines going to the inside unit. Now I'm hooking up the gauge set. You just remove the brass nut. You will need a mini split adapter fitting to hook this up. And I leave it hooked up to the vacuum pump for about an hour. While that's pumping, I can go ahead and start hooking up the electrical. There's only three wires to hook up on this indoor unit. The red wire goes to terminal one, the white wire goes to terminal two, and the green wire goes to the ground. Now I'm wrapping up all the lines. You wanna make sure that uh, later on you come back and put some pipe insulation around that uh, the connection up there where the exposed copper is. And we ordered a line set housing or cover for this line, but it was on back order and we just didn't get it in time. Now I'm wiring up the outdoor disconnect panel. I just score the Romex and then peel off the uh, exterior sheathing. And I install a waterproof connector on our conduit. And I just hook the red wire to one terminal, the black wire to the other terminal, and the ground hooks directly to the panel. This unit only requires a 10-2 with ground wire. And then I install a waterproof flex line from the disconnect panel to the condenser unit. Now I'm wiring up the condenser. This line goes into the indoor unit. You just do red wire to terminal one, white wire to terminal two, green wire to the ground. And now we can tie in our electric coming from our disconnect panel. The red wire goes to terminal one, the black wire goes to terminal two, and the copper wire goes to the ground. You may notice an extra white wire. That's only because uh, Lowe's didn't have any 10-2 with ground. So I had to buy 10-3 with ground wire and that's what we used. All right, the vacuum pump has been on for about an hour. Here's a look at the gauges. You can see on the blue dial that I'm about 20, negative 29 HG. You want at least negative 20 HG. If you're not getting that, then you might have a leak. The condenser comes pre-charged with the correct amount of Freon. All you have to do is open the valves with an Allen wrench. I ran the electrical wire from the unit through the attic to the electrical panel, and now it's time to tie in. 
There wasn't any extra space open in this electrical panel, but there, there was a uh, 230 volt uh, welder that wasn't being used. So we removed the 40 amp breaker and I installed a 30 amp double pole breaker. I hook up my red wire to one pole on the breaker and I hook up the black wire to the other pole on the breaker and then I hook up my common and my ground to the termination bars on the panel. And I just wrapped up these white wires that went to the old welder just in case the homeowner wants to add that welder back at some point. Yeah. It's running down. Feel some flow. I'm feeling it. <laughs> it ain't cold yet, but it's flowing. It's flowing. Check that out. That's crazy. Cool. Here we are. Mm. Oh yeah, I felt they get colder. Feels nice, man. Feels real nice. <laughs> I like it. It's gonna get free in here now. I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. Thanks for watching Willow's World of DIY. Until next time.